Hey there designers, so Matthew here. Welcome back for day two of this wild and crazy adventure that we are on. So, we didn't get to cover quite all of this material when I was out there visiting you, but I wanted to make sure that we had a more kind of complete record of all the things that I was hoping we were gonna get to cover, as well as a little bit more thorough kind of look at some of the things that we talked about. I know that, you know, our memory of these kinds of things often feels kind of like fleeting, uh, and it's hard to take kind of close or pay close attention when there's so much material that we're kind of actively covering, especially in the context of a workshop. So we've got a little bit more space and time to kind of pull apart some of these things and look at a few of these things more carefully. And that's what we're going to continue to do here on day two. So in this case, I've opened up our uh, day two start a day file. And if you've downloaded that repository, right, uh, that's right here inside of day two. And inside of day two, start a day in this tow file right here. Uh, for your reference, the end of day file lives over here in end of day. So if you want to take a look at anything that we arrived to by the end of this, you have that uh, piece of documentation to kind of go back to that lives there on the wiki, or excuse me, not on the wiki, uh, that lives there in the repository. And in case you have forgotten where on earth to track all that down from, you can actually head on over there's a bunch of ways to get to it, so from my GitHub page, you can actually look for repositories, and you can look for our Yale Workshop repository. You can clone or download it from here. If that feels like it's far away and you're not quite sure how on earth to get there, you can also go uh, here to my site, under Workshops, under the Workshop, right? Again, one more time, that's right here, 2017, Yale, Touches on a Workshop 2017. This is a complete list of all the documentation that we have, right? Everything's kind of written down uh, here that we talked about over the past couple days, videos that uh, were posted from our simple kind of movie maker, or not movie maker, but uh, movie player, as well as a bunch of links for us also. So all of that lives here as well. There's lots of ways to get to that. It's up on the web. It's for you to take advantage of as much as you'd like. Whew. Okay. So what we did in class is we kind of uh, dove right into some real-time rendering to get going. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to take a moment to kind of step back and for just a moment kind of look just at SOPs first because of how we kind of understand how SOPs work and, and what those do for us a little bit as operators can be really helpful. So again, here inside of base SOPs, right, um, we have our single ops. These are kind of our sweet 16. I've laid all of them out here so you can kind of get a sense for how they work. I'm not going to talk about this particular uh, set of ops too much. We're going to look at them in practice. Um, but there is a good chunk of them here kind of already kind of configured to do something. Sometimes when you, you know, lay them down in your network for the first time, it's hard to know what they're doing. Um, and so there's some examples already kind of laid out there so you can get a handle on them. Okay. But that's, you know, that's all well and good, but let's actually look at, at putting some things together. So surface operators are how we manipulate pieces of geometry, and that's especially useful when we're going to do any kind of real-time rendering, when we're going to do any modeling, we're going to do kind of simple projection mapping, if we kind of re can reduce our set to some kind of uh, primitive shapes. Sometimes we can do that. Sometimes we need a proper model built for a particular environment, or we need a laser scan. Um, Sometimes we can get away with an awful lot as long as we've kind of figured out the general shape and look of things. And these are also great little operators, little, <laughs> that's funny. These are great operators to use when you actually want to dig into some of the more exciting pieces of real-time rendering uh, and procedural modeling here inside of Touch. So to get started, we're, we're going to look at a skin SOP. That's kind of our the place that we're headed. This is what we actually want to work with. But this needs a few things. We can see that it needs a cross-section. Uh, in this case, it needs a cross-section cross U and uh, a V, right? So like, brr, okay, how do we understand what that is? How can we use this thing? There are a couple different ways we can actually use this operator. So in this case, we can see there's a U and V, or we can do just U and V. Um, and we're going to treat the kind of UV kind of situation here. So, you know, that's all well and good, but what does that, what does that mean exactly? Well, let's throw down a few pieces of geometry to see how that works. So I'm going to start with a circle SOP. And, and instead of kind of leaving it open here, I'm going to open up my parameter window with using the P key. 
Uh, and I'm going to change this archetype from being closed to open. And then I'm going to change this from being a full 360 degrees to just 180 degrees. So now I've just got like half a circle here. Now if I hit the A key to make this viewer active, I can actually tumble around this operator a little bit, which is pretty slick. And what I want to do next, right, it's kind of hard to, I don't want to get too far ahead of us. I know we just kind of want to do some things so we can get a sense of what's actually going on. Um, so I'm going to use a transform, and I'm going to use a transform uh, because I can take advantage of the fact that I've already made this piece of geometry. Uh, there's no need to actually add another operator into our network if we don't uh, want to or need to. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and change our scale down to 0.3. Excellent, and I'm going to transform this, in our case, just to 1 down the z-axis, down the z-axis. And then I'm going to merge that together. Uh, and when we merge these together, we're going to kind of be able to see both of these in the same place. We, it kind of looks like a rainbow from this perspective, but if we make it viewer active, we can see that we actually have this kind of like tunnel-y shape almost, right? We've got this little semicircle here and this larger semicircle back here. And, you know, that's, that's all well and good. What does that do? Well, if we plug that into our skin, we can see that what we're ended up here is actually more kind of like a, a half a cone. And in fact, if we, you know, change this maybe from being an open arc to being a closed arc, well, we actually have something more like akin to a lampshade, which is fun. When we've got this put together, we could come back here, for example, and we could maybe play with the rotation uh, element here. We get a better sense of how some of this is working, right? So we can begin to see a little bit better what this thing is doing. Now, part of what is so fun and exciting here about Touch Designer is that because this is procedural, we get to see this kind of work as we're manipulating it. It's one of the wonderful pieces about this particular environment is that we don't have to understand these things abstractly. We can actually get our hands dirty a little bit and push them around. So I'm not going to talk too much more about that. Just, you know, what I want us to get a handle on here is kind of building some things with SOPs and having a sense of what that looks like and what's going on here. So that's a pretty slick technique.